I have 100 bull ant eggs that are about to be destroyed. And a queen that is in the clutches of her furious workers. This nest move could be a disaster. My bull ants are bursting out of this nest. They need a bigger house. Their larvae and cocoons are starting to overflow into the outworld, so it's time to upgrade their living space. Additionally, their outworld is a mess. It's really quite disgusting. So I have decided to give them a bigger space to roam, a bigger nest and bigger yard. This is the new setup, and you can see there's room for all the kids. But this is no easy task. Trying to move hundreds of one of the world's most dangerous ants is not for the faint-hearted. I have to be careful I don't end up a victim to their bad mood. That venomous sting will put me out of action for a while. So first we need to prepare the new outworld with the bull ants preferred substrate, red sand. Even it all out. Then add this rock, which has heaps of crevices I know the bull ants will love to climb. And I've got the final home ready for my overflowing colony. So with my special soft touch ant tweezers, it's time to begin moving these very fiery workers who are not happy at my interference. The first workers are exploring their new living quarters with skeptical caution. And they will not be happy they have lost the scent of their old nest and the reassuring presence of the queen. It's a slow slog to get them all out. And the more workers I put in, the more agitated they seem to be getting with their new home. The last thing to do in the old outworld is to remove this rock, where I suspect the final few recalcitrant holdouts are making their last stand. And there they are, the last troublemakers that I need to move to the new outworld. The really sneaky workers are hiding in the rock's crevices. But just when I think it's done, I do a final sweep, and these ones have dug in deep, thinking they could outsmart me. There are also the workers still in their old nest who are tentatively peeking out to see what the fuss is all about. They retreat quickly once they see the dreaded ant tweezers. Next, I have to move this small nest, which is full of cocoons and relatively clean, and attach it to the new outworld. At last, the new setup is finally starting to take shape. However, the hardest and most stressful part is still to come. And that's trying to get all the eggs and Her Majesty, the Queen, out of this dirty nest and into this new massive clean nest. If the Queen is harmed or too stressed, it could lead to her death and the destruction of the whole colony. After drilling off the cover, I open the nest up in a container with flu on around the top so none can escape. Into the new outworld they go, leaving the eggs, the larvae, and the queen until last. I remove the larvae, and because I don't know how well the colony will settle, I give the biggest larvae a feed of mealworm to make sure they are fully sustained for a few days while the chaos calms down. After that, I place them all into the outworld for the colony to deal with. It's more disorderly than I hoped, and the poor larvae get scattered and taken for long walks around the outworld before common sense starts to prevail. As the first larvae gets taken into the nest, I can breathe a little easier, knowing that perhaps these workers have it all under control. But now it's time for the eggs. There must be over a hundred eggs I've gathered, and my hope is they take them in an orderly manner into the large nest. Well, I couldn't have been more wrong. The eggs seem to drive them into a frenzy, and like furious toddlers, the workers start hurling the eggs in every direction. 
My carefully prepared bowl of eggs has become scrambled eggs. This little lady's evident fury makes me lose heart that these valuable eggs will be accepted back into the colony. Except, wait. One worker stands out in the frenzied crowd. She is a nurse worker and she understands her role is to look after the eggs at all cost. It only takes one beacon, a shining example to stand out and lead the way. And this lady is the hero we all needed. While the masses riot, a second worker follows her lead and very quickly the storm quietens. The precious, fragile eggs, which are this colony's future generation, are gathered together to be carried into the new nest. And we are lucky enough to see the journey of the very first egg into the new nest. Lastly comes the most important ingredient to the success of this newly moved colony, the introduction of the queen. Without her approval, this nest move will fail. And I watch anxiously as she walks in circles with no direction or purpose. Things do not look good. Finally, in what could be mistaken as a sign of aggression, a worker ant grabs the queen forcibly by her mandibles and drags her around. This is actually a positive sign as the worker is trying to guide the queen to a new location, controlling her movement, which is normal behavior in a colony relocation. The queen is vital to the colony's survival, so workers take special care to ensure she reaches the new nest safely. As the queen is relocated, pointless squabbles occur. However, over a matter of hours, the initial frantic chaos morphs back into the expected orderly restructuring of an ant colony. Every worker has their task and they busily get to work. Moving eggs and larvae and cocoons into the new nest. The nest is still looking a bit empty and I notice a hold up in the tubing system where a lot of the brood is being dumped. Lengthy meetings are occurring between concerned workers about the best place to move the precious cargo. More enterprising workers find different ways to get the brood into the nest. But before I know it, all the eggs and the queen have found their way into the smaller nest. She patrols back and forth over the eggs, keeping one eye on her babies, and for the first time, I am optimistic that the nest move will be a success. To help them settle down, I give them some sugar water on a cotton ball and slowly the industrious and orderly nature of the worker ants start to pay off. To encourage movement between the two nests, I add extra tubing and the colonies start using immediately. In all the reorganizing, the queen moves into the main nest, giving fussy instructions to the busy workers as to where everything belongs. There is a reassuring method of meticulous organization of the brood into areas where the different sized larvae are all grouped together. Different groups of workers are tasked with watching over the cocoons or the larvae while the hunters and guards roam the outworld, keeping an eye on the perimeter. And before long, it's business as usual. The queen commands. The preening commences. Food is gathered and the never-ending busyness of an ant colony resumes. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell icon for more ant keeping adventures and tips. Until next time, happy ant keeping.